This video contains content sponsored by John Wilson Blades and MK Blades. Opinions discussed in this video do not reflect the views of John Wilson or MK. Hello and welcome to the skating lesson. We are thrilled to welcome a three-time United States champion, five-time world competitor and world professional champion, Renee Roca. Welcome to the show, Renee. Thank you. How are you guys? Good. We're doing very well. Now, we know that you choreographed a brilliant Lion King program last year that we loved from Denny and Frazier. You did a Tina Turner finale on Stars on Ice and our friend Alyssa Sisney's program in the 2011 oh, season. Yeah. So how much coaching and choreography do you currently do? Quite a bit. Um, I'm technically not a coach. Um, okay. I don't go to competitions with students or anything like that. But at my rink in LA, I work kind of as a supplementary person with, you know, I do all the moves in the field. I work on stroking and edges. I polish the programs. I make up programs. So, um, you know, I've, I've got my hands full with that. And then I go out of town pretty frequently to work with you know, international skaters or do something for Christy Amaguchi or Brian Boitano or I did Battle of the Blades for several seasons. So um, I like keeping my foot in different rooms. Well, you were always known for joking about your relationship with Gorsha Soar. So what is Gorsha up to these days? Well, Gorsha became an international arbitrator. He's a lawyer. Oh, okay. And uh, right toward the end of our... You know, we were doing Stars on Ice, and we did a lot of the Disson shows and things like that. And he's like, you know, I'm really interested in law. I think I want to go to law school. So we made that happen. And he, we were living in San Francisco at the time, and uh, he went to Hastings Law School here in San Francisco, graduated, took the California bar, passed it the first try. That's hard. Good for him. Um, first job out of the gate was in Paris at a British law firm that is the top international arbitration law firm in the world. So they took him, first job out of the gate. He spent several years in Paris and didn't really love it. Relocated to Moscow, his hometown, worked with a new firm there. And didn't really love it. <laughs> and always wanted to come back to California because his mother lives here. He had brought his family over when we were skating. Um, his mother lives here and his brother um, went to medical school and is now becoming a doctor. So he worked his way back to California just recently and relocated to L.A. Oh, very cool. So I see him. Yeah, I mean, that's perfect. And the hilarious thing is, yes, you know, on our skating days, it was like, you know... It was that kind of partnership where it's like, who's the leader? Who's the leader? But now that we don't skate, we are so, it's so lovely because he's always been like family to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my family really embraced him when he defected and all of that. So um, the nice thing is, is that now that we don't have to work together, we get along beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the way it goes. Yes. So yeah, it's been really nice because um, he's always going to be like family. Well, looking ahead to the World Championships this coming week, Renee, what yeah. memories do you have from your time competing at Worlds? Is there any one memory that stands out to you? Um, you know, I think the first time we went to the World Championships, it was in Prague. Um, we It was our first season together. We just stepped into nationals and won. And at that time, you know, the big controversy was oh, a Russian skater representing the U.S. What a scandal. Back in the day, because we were, I think we might have been the first couple to try this, you know, that, mm -hmm. that we were uh, combining countries. And the USFSA didn't really know what to do with a person like this with no status. So there was a big uproar about it. And, of course, Russia was mad because he had defected and now he was, you know, representing the U.S. So we were thrilled to get to our first U.S. championships. We were thrilled to make the world team. And we were just sort of like, you know, we, we got to um, Prague. And you know how the panel back in the day used to be uh, Soviet satellite country, you know, Kazakhstan, uh -huh. Georgia. <laughs> da, 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 you know, sort of like out of the whole panel, like more than half were Soviet satellite countries. Oh. <laughs> it's not a good sign. But, you know, I think it's just that first time you make it there together after all the struggle was special.
Yeah. Now, I don't know a lot about dance. I'm always trying to learn. But for somebody like myself who really doesn't know what they're looking for, just yeah. broadly, what should I look for when I'm comparing top teams? Not necessarily the teams that we're going to discuss, but just in general. What do you look for? I think... Um, I think you have to look for somehow you feel a connection to the material that they're doing because there can be so much of the sameness, the sameness, the sameness. And I think you have to really look at the couple's aesthetic as a pair and are they doing something interesting and engaging? Mm. Because, you know, we've seen a lot of Spanish programs. We've seen a lot of, you know, this and that. And it's, I feel as though it's the ones that are kind of reaching out of the box a little bit that are trying to create a new vibe and a new look and something new. Those are the ones that catch my attention anyway. Well, how much are holds still important? Because back when you competed, it was very important that the dance teams be in close holds. It doesn't seem like the teams use holds as much anymore. Do you find that to be the case? Um, I think there's a little more freedom in it. Um, you know, in a circular footwork, you have to stay in closed hold. There's certain moments where you really have to. The transitions seem to be opening up a little bit. Um, but I think the the thing that they look for now is no matter what hold you're in, that your posture and your closeness is so finessed and effortless mm -hmm. and it doesn't look like it's labor. You have to look like in your upper bodies you're floating and it's almost like magical transitions, you know, how the hand grips change and how your hold goes from one to the next. It shouldn't look like it's labor. It should look almost like it's just magic that it just it just floated and got there with no effort. Seamless, yeah. Just very, very seamless, yeah. That there isn't, um, there isn't a lot of grabbing mm -hmm. and a lot of um, tension there. That it's very, and that's really hard to do, actually. And I think the pairs are even trying to catch on this, you know, this feeling and jump on this bandwagon because it's beautiful when it's done done properly. Well, looking ahead to the World Championships, for the short dance this season, what should we look for? Are there different points that we should be looking for in that particular dance? Uh, yeah, Ravensburger Waltz, timing. It is one of the quickest compulsory tempo-wise that there is. The man has very little to do but chasses and swing rolls, lucky men. Uh, the woman is twizzling her head off. Twizzle, 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 twizzle. So um, the tempo and the tidiness of the footwork is pretty important. Uh, it's kind of hard to read speed on video or on television, but speed is always crucial, like when you're in person watching a really big pattern that flies without a lot of effort. Mm -hmm. um, and correct edges, you know. The always, usual. yeah. Yeah, yeah. What do you think of the short dance overall? Obviously, we're several years into it, the hybrid of the compulsory and the original. Yeah. Does it work for you, or do you prefer the original way of separating the dances? I don't mind this. I always like seeing change because I think things get a little stagnant and boring when they stay the same for too long. So I don't like seeing it shift every year, though. Like, you got to give something a chance for a couple of years so people can actually latch on to it and, and make something wonderful, hopefully. So I don't mind it. Um, and I think that they're going to break out of the mold a little bit next year and throw hip-hop into it, which I'm Yeah, just explain like, that. How is this working? You have hip-hop and blues. What's like the it. pattern? Explain it to us. Okay. I don't know what hip-hop has to do with blues, but... I think it's just that they're trying to be a little bit more current and pull in maybe a younger audience to get more interested. And I think you don't have to choose hip hop. I mean, I think there's a few rhythms that you can choose and hip hop is one of the ones that's included. And I think if you're good at hip hop, I think you should go with it because I think not everybody's good at it. And if you are, I think you're going to stand out a little bit. It'll just, at least it throws a wrench in and mixes things up and makes it interesting a little bit. Yeah, but something, um, something yeah, I'm all curious. Well, we, speaking of hip-hop, we saw a clip on social media of Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer practicing their hip-hop before they announced that they will be coming back next season. So yeah. do you think that they're going to be in the mix? Do you think they'll be a threat for the world title next year? I think they could be in the mix. Even though they've been away for two seasons, they are trying to stay current and develop and take it to the next level. I think they're really interested in their art in skating. 
And I think they, they, they feel still like they have something to offer. So I think they could be really relevant still. Um, and I think they're going to, now with the coaching change, I think it's, I'm so curious to see what this is all going to be about. It throws a whole new aspect onto the group, and now it's going to mix things up. Mm. I think that's always a good thing. Very, very interesting. Are you intrigued that after their complaints in Sochi, they've gone back to training with potentially their top competitors? How would that work for you? Would you have wanted to train with Punslim and Swallow every single day? Is it going to definitely going to keep We things? did at the beginning. You yeah. know, we were all from the same camp in Colorado Springs. And then um, Jared and Liz left to go back to Detroit, which is originally where they were from. You know, the families were both from there. And, and you know, Igor Spielbahn defected with Gorsha. He was part of that group. So they went back to Detroit and we stayed. You know, I don't know how that dynamic is all going to work out because, you know, everyone says, well, we're the best of friends. And we're we're not friends, friends, honey. Well. Oh, yeah. And you're thinking to yourself, yeah, really? <laughs> um, and it could be you just were fine. with Sunset and Swallow, too. You choreographed for them. Yeah, and then, we did. And then they tried to prevent citizenship. So I it all happens in skating, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we're all best friends. What can I say? <laughs> but... Um, it, I mean, that just went down the way it went down. I was like, what? <laughs> you got to deal with what you got to deal with. Um, you know, I think that um, Marie France and Patrice, um, I think they ha they have, at least up to this point, a very good working environment there. Mm -hmm. I think they are very conscious and respectful of the fact that there has to be respect for everyone in the rink and your coaches. And... Um, I think it's just going to make everyone work harder. Who can say if it's going to be, uh, you know, if there's going to be tension, anxiety, who can say? I mean, I think it all has to sort of get going. But I feel like, you know, Papadakis and Cizeron have now developed their own style. Like they've taken their own way and they're going to run with it. And Tessa and Scott have their own style too. I don't know if they're really – they're comp they're not comparable exactly because they're different enough that I think they're all going to bring something good to the table. But I think it takes years to develop, you know, good working relationship with everyone in the group. It doesn't just happen overnight and it's always changing. You it's always changing. A little bit earlier, Renee, about your first world championships and seeing that judging panel and where all the judges were coming from. How important is the technical panel and the countries from which they they are? You know, I mean, how much of a role does that play? Yeah, it still counts. I think it still counts. When you see, um, you know, if I, I know that the panel is supposed to be anonymous, but they're still sitting there watching. And, you know, I mean, if you're if if you know your judges and people from your past, like you know who's from what country. So whenever the draw shows that your judge made it to the panel, that's a good thing. <laughs> Believe me, I mean, you're sitting there going, thank you. Um, and if you know that your judge hasn't made it on the panel, now you got to find your allies. So I think it still matters. Sure it does. I think one of the interesting things about the specialists is that there's no one directly from one of the top countries, but I think someone British is the ref for the technical specialist, and they're thinking Igor has a British team, there's a Japanese it judge, helps. Marina has a Japanese, and is that going to be the play here? Every little bit helps. Of course it does. Of course it does. You always want your allies close to you. You want your allies up there, technical specialists, somebody who's judging, whatever it is, you want your people in there. You do. Well, let's discuss some of the teams that we'll see in Boston. Let's start with Papadakis, Papadakis and Cizeron, the reigning world champions. Mm -hmm. Heading into this event, they have the highest season's best of this year up to this date, despite the fact that they were injured the first part of the season. So do you see them as the front runners heading into Boston? Maybe technically. Well, I mean, I think they, they have a late start, yes. Mm -hmm. They're lovely, yes. But I don't think it's just that they're going to walk in and just take it. I don't. I think there's going to be a little bit of a push and a challenge, I think, from Shibatani's. I think it's in our home country. Shibatani's are from Boston. <laughs> um, I don't know technically who's on the panel, um, you know, judge-wise or, or technical specialist-wise, but 
Uh, yeah, they have momentum, mm -hmm. and I, I, but I don't think it's a open and shut case. I think they're going to have to skate it. Everyone's going to have to skate it for every placement because I think this is going to be tight. They originally claimed that they wanted to do something very different from last year, but there's been a lot of criticism that this year's free dance and last year's free dance seem similar in terms of the theme. Do you agree with that? A little bit. A little. Just very little. I think um, only in that uh, I see a, maybe a couple of the um, lift elements that look slightly similar and the organic feel of their program is slightly similar. Uh, slightly. Um, I don't think it's a copycat of each other, but I think that they've found their niche about what they do well and they're trying that recipe again a little bit. There's some There's some nice original things in there too. But yeah, you can see a little bit of similarity, yeah. And one other thing is, he's often noted for his skating skills, and there are some people that feel maybe he's stronger than she is. So when you're judging a team, how do you evaluate when one partner is stronger than the other? Is it supposed to be an average of the two? How do you kind of make that impression? Well, it's really rare to get a couple where both are exactly at the same level completely, you're always going to have one who's maybe a little bit more special. And I mean, he's definitely, you know, Guillaume, he's special. Like, uh, when you watch him, your eyes, generally when you watch a pair, I think most spectators' eyes go to the girl. She's pretty. She's sparkly. You know, she's kind of the flower. She's the one you look at. But with them, I notice both. I notice him a lot, you know, and I do watch him. So I, I think as a boy, he's particularly special as a partner. Um, I think that technically there, some people are really good um, at certain elements like the twizzles, mm -hmm. which is a lot of, a fear of a lot of the couples, you know, that twizzle element comes up and so <laughs> sort of like, <gasps> Yeah, that, brace yourself. Yeah. It is. It's, it's, yeah. Explain the twizzles to Jenny because Jenny is one that said, I did a triple triple. What is it about these twizzles? Yeah, and I can't, this honestly, Renee, I can't imagine getting nervous for my footwork sequence. Like, yeah, I don't the, get it. The twizzle, imagine if you had to do your footwork sequence full out, full speed, inches away from your partner and be exact in unison. Okay. Exact in unison. Do you know what I mean? Like every single rotation had to be exactly the same. You can't crash into each other. You can't be far apart. You have to have coverage of ice. It's the unison part. Okay. You know what I mean? It's the unison part because you're not by yourself. You okay, must everyone. match exactly your partner. You must space it exactly the same. Your speed, everything must be exact the same. And I think that's what makes it tricky. It's not the twizzle itself it's all of the different kind of the variables it's that the perhaps you can't of control. Having to do it like a mirror of each other okay well one team that has perhaps the best twizzles are the shibatanis i mean yep. their twizzles they're always and the way that they do it in their free dance this season as that music change it's so yep. dynamic yeah what do you think about their rise this season and what will it take for them to win They've had a really good momentum going this season. And it's just, you know, sometimes it's just your time. Like you hit the right recipe this year. And um, I think their short dance, which is character driven, is interesting because of that fact. You know, that's what Marina decided from this year. And I think that because they stepped away and went to another choreographer for their free dance, that was the ticket. Mm -hmm. because it allowed them to step out of their comfort zone and go into another realm and it's paying off. And it just took a few tries this season to get its legs and now it's really special. And yes, their element of their twizzles is like their little meal ticket. Oh, and they because own it. They, they do own it. Yeah. Listen, they've been skating together since they were born in diapers. Uh -huh. How many hours of twizzles have they Weren't got? Were they named after Usava and Zulin? Is that <laughs> I true? I right. You have to ask them that. I don't know. <laughs> there's that Russian name thing going on on yeah. a Japanese family. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I think they have great momentum this year, and um, they haven't stepped a foot wrong lately, so if they can just hold their nerves, it'll be good. Now, we've seen the last few seasons, they've kind of gone back and forth between uh, Chalk and Bates and then the Shibutanis. Do you think if they beat Madison and Evan here in Boston, it will just close 
whatever that was in terms of the ping ponging back and forth, that that'll be it, over? Um, yeah, it could. You can never predict the future because you never, you just never can say never. You never know. Um, but I think that if they are ahead, um, if they're the top couple this year, by the end of the year, um, they're going to be uh, the people that everyone's chasing. And I can't imagine that our federation would want to keep flip-flopping. Yeah, it just doesn't back seem politically forth, you know? smart. Yeah. You know, like, oh, this couple we like. No, 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 this year it's this couple. I mean, I can see flipping once, but when you're two years out of Olympics, are you going to really be flipping back and forth and back and forth? I, I don't know. Were you surprised that the panel actually put them first at nationals after they were behind Chalk and Bates at the final? It seemed nope. like a pretty momentous thing at the time. That the, not that they skated better, but that the judges did it. Yeah, I was. It was funny because I didn't go to nationals. I am going to go to worlds. I didn't go to nationals, but uh, some of my coaches from my rink who were going to nationals just as they were leaving, you know, uh, to go to the airport, they're like, "What do you think's going to happen in dance?" And I said, "You know," I said. I don't know what will happen in the short dance, one or another. I said, but I think at the end of the day, I think Shibutani's are going to win. Don't ask me why. It was just a feeling. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, how do you know? And I said, I don't know. I just have this feeling. And um, I wasn't there to see it in person, but I'm not surprised. Mm -mm. They seem to really be the dark horse, kind of to win the whole event this year and shock everyone. It just looks like the momentum is all coming into place for them. What yeah. do you see as their strengths and weaknesses? I think their strengths are that they've, like I said, they've been together since they were children. And they have all those thousands of hours of training behind them. They know each other. They think the same way. That's always a benefit. Um, I think, on the other hand, a, and, and it's not a weakness, but the fact that you're a brother and sister limits you a little bit from having that romantic interaction. If that is a choice that you want to make in a, in a program, it's, you know, you have to work your way around that a bit. Um, I don't know. They're just, they're very clean. They're very polished. They're very they consistent. Controls. I would say if there was one thing about it, it it can get in the past. I was a little bored mm. by some of their stuff. It was just, it was nice. And I would be like, you know, there just wasn't anything that was so gritty and edgy and like, and now they're starting to show that side. It's almost like they've kind of turned the page and now they're into that rawness and that, and that's, it, it's sort of like they needed that. So I think they're on the right path because they were nice before, lovely, nice, and now it's like it's going somewhere, which is good. Well, you talk about that nice quality, and Dave and I have discussed this, and we get a lot of backlash. When we talk about Caitlin and Andrew, we run Project, we find them to be really nice, pleasant skaters, but in 2014, they grabbed us in their free dance, but not yeah. so much since then, and we saw them struggle at Four Continents. Yeah. How important is it for them to do very well at Worlds? I mean, first or second, particularly when you talk about Tessa and Scott coming back. <sighs> yeah, that's hard. Um, bottom line is you have to skate it. You cannot put a foot wrong, not even a little three-turn wrong. Um, and sometimes, you know, I, I think that Caitlin actually seems really consistent. Mm -hmm. She rarely makes a mistake. He will sometimes, like it might be a twizzle here or there or something like that. Um, I think that they may need to push their boundaries a little bit on their material from this point forward, because I think everyone's going to step it up now with Tessa and Scott coming back. And you are looking at, you know, you were national champions in your country and now you're going <laughs> to, you you have the former Olympic champions coming back. Yeah. So something's got to step up to the next level somehow. They have to find whatever it is that makes them turn their page mm. and get up to a new, a new something. Yeah. Well, speaking of material, their free dance is a dramatic approach. It's called This Bitter Earth. Mm -hmm. It seems like they're really going for the Academy Award role with this. I personally don't get what's going on. I know there's addiction or something. It's, I, I don't know. It's one of those free dance themes that goes over my head. Does it work for you? Is it effective? Um, I'm not sure what the 
theme or storyline is behind it. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't have that inside information, what, what they're specifically trying to portray in a storyline. I like um, that it's a bit abstract. And it's to me, like when I'm watching it, I'm just looking for the connection and the movement. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to relate it to a story, even though they may have a storyline that they're whatever that background is. Um, but I just, I watch it just in appreciation of just abstract movement. That's all I'm sort of, it's not what I'm looking for, but that's what I'm getting from it. Do you think they're strong enough to win this season? I think, I think they could if other people make mistakes. No. I don't know. I don't think it's, I think any, any, anybody could win it. Anybody could win it, but they can't step a foot wrong. And especially if people make mistakes and somebody doesn't, that kind of gives you an advantage. Well, we've seen Madison and Evan struggling this season. It seems the past two years they've kind of fallen down the ranks just a bit. How concerned should they be heading into Boston? And is this kind of a do or die? We talked about the Shibutanis a little bit earlier for them to just have a lights out, two lights out skates. Yeah, they're going to need it. I mean, let's face it. They are they are chasers now, which which is good because that's a motivating feeling. You know, mm -hmm. when you're chasing a spot instead of looking behind you trying to protect your spot, that's always like, yeah. you know, and I'm sure since nationals, they're all like fired up like, because I think a little bit of angst and anger kind of pushes you, especially if you're really on the same page and supporting each other. So, yeah, they're going to need two lights out skates um but maybe they have the motivation to make themselves do that and being in your home country helps too you know they'll have the audience behind them well when you speak about teams one being stronger than the other i think i'm often critical that i don't feel like her skating skills are as strong as his and in person they seem a little bit slow do you have you seen them live do you agree with that or um i've only seen them live once i've not seen them live compete mm -hmm. uh so i can't I can't comment mm -hmm. on the slow thing. Mm -hmm. um, they have quite a height difference, um, mm -hmm. although I think they do a really good job with it. But that height difference is like, that. Uh, to me, that's a little bit physically distracting, just a little. Um, I'll, I'll, you know, when I get there and I can see it, I'll be able to, you know, read on it much, much better. But uh, he's actually a lovely skater, Evan. I rarely see him make a mistake. He's very good. He's really good. Very, very lovely. And, you know, maybe she's just trying to keep up with him a little bit. Well, another team we have to discuss when we talk about medal contenders is Anna and Luca. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's possible for them to win another world title? I don't see it. I feel like, I feel like there's this fresh, new outlook now. And they're, I think they're still back in La Dolce Vita, the, the traditional kind of thing. And I think our eyes are looking for something new. Mm -hmm. I don't know. that Maybe that's just my opinion. But I feel like we're heading towards a trend of new, like something different, something fresh, something a little more out of the box, whatever it is. And the traditional stuff just doesn't seem to be keeping up with the newer trends, I think. Well, one thing is in their favor potentially is that it's Ottavio Cinquanta's last year. They're the strongest yep. Italian skaters. Yep. He's Italian. Does that help them? Does that give them that extra little push a for maybe? A little, that? maybe just a little bit. It always helps to have, you know, ISU president in your corner, putting a little pressure where he can. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna be, I, I don't know if that's gonna be enough. They have to skate lights out too. Yeah, you know. Definitely. Um, well, a couple of the teams that we're looking at to really make a mark: Hubble and Donahue from the U.S. They have that short program. You talk about something new; it's garnered mm -hmm. a lot of attention this year. What do you yeah. think of them? I like them. Um, I like their material this year. I think their material has grown into something that's become quite interesting. Like they skate better and better and better, and they're sort of like their peak is kind of rising do you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i think um i think they're right they're going to be right kind of stepping up the ladder 
Um, I don't, I'm not as familiar with them. I've actually never even met them in person. Um, I don't know if I've even seen them skate live, but I think it was a, a good move for them to go to Marie France and, and Patch. I think it was like that, that new fresh mm. thing that they needed and it's paying off. Well, Piper and Paul struggled earlier this season not making the Grand Prix final. They took the time to kind of rework, got new costumes, which Dave and I were very happy about. Yeah. Came back and skated very well at Nationals. <laughs> but now we talk about Tessa and Scott coming back into the mix. I mean, you, your heart has to go out to them. What do they need to do in order to not fall down? I don't know, you know, and there are a couple who are definitely out of the box. Yes. Like, yeah. Nobody okay. looks like them. Nobody looks like them. They are original, very Christopher Dean influenced, and Chris is always about that tricky, clever kind of, you know, skating and, and interesting positions and tricks. Um, you know, they're one of those quirky couples that are just, you know, the, you're, you have to like shake your head and take a second look, you know, they're, they're, and they're trying to be so different and interesting, which I totally appreciate, you know, kudos to them for not being cookie cutter. Mm -hmm. Oh, but you know, they're in Canada. I know. <laughs> <They're not good. laughs> Everybody in Canada is good and doesn't yeah. Scott are coming back and I don't know. What do you have to do? Light your hair on fire? Or you That's what I, was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you have to do. I mean, God bless them. Yeah. I don't know. I wouldn't want to be an ice dancer in Canada these days. Yeah. Oof. Usually people wouldn't want to be an ice dancer in Russia, but we have seen Nikita and Victoria have some success this season. What do you think of them as a team? Obviously, he was so successful with his former partner. Yeah. What I do you like make of them? them? I like them. Um, I, I like him. He's crazy, wild, mm -hmm. abandoned yeah. skater. And she's now like kind of, they're, they're molding together a little better. They seemed a little disjointed their first season it or so. I feel like she was just hanging on for yeah, the Like just holding yeah. on. Like he just looks yeah. like you wind him up and he's just shot out of a rocket and she's just hanging on mm -hmm. for her life. But now they're, you know, and it takes a while. They're new. They're still really new together and, and they're getting their momentum and they're getting, their, they're gelling. And I think they're quite lovely. They're both attractive. Mm. He's handsome. She's beautiful. Uh, his twizzles are a nail biter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and his start far. Oh my God, he made it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> his start far ahead of hers, and then he bypasses. Yeah. He's wi it's wild. I somebody's got to like kind of like steady that racehorse when it comes to twizzle time. <laughs> But yeah, I'm sort of like, here, here it comes, here it comes, you know, and I sort of, I don't look at her, I'm looking at him going, is he going to make it? You know, because it's, it's like full speed, like wild abandon. Yeah. Uh, very exciting to see. Uh, but I, I do, I like them. I think they're gonna, I think they're going to be something. Yeah. Well, I want to know well, before, from, oh, I'm sorry. I want to ask Renee one thing while she is here. Our original favorite female skater skated her world championship winning program, Jill Trenary, 1990. You choreographed the program to Yanni's The Mermaid. Tell us about it. She had the hair. It was 80s fitness music. What was going on in this program? Uh, I'm just going to give you the short story because I was training in Colorado Springs at the time. The ice dancers trained at the Air Force Academy. The singles trained at the Broadmoor. We didn't have a lot of interaction with each other, but... One day I ran into Jill coming out of the music store completely frustrated. She couldn't find music for the year, and she just stopped him. She's like, Renee, you know, like Sandra had choreographed her program, Sandra Bezik, up to that point. And for some reason, Sandra at the last minute couldn't come and do her programs. And she was beside herself. She's like, I don't have a choreographer. I don't have music. I have to get this material done. And she looked at me, and she goes, do you have any music I could use? And I said, well... I can pass you some of my old free dance stuff. Some of it might be useful, which I did. She picked up a bunch of pieces that she liked and then asked me to choreograph her long program because she was so desperate. And I was just like, I, uh, I'll do it on one condition. I said, we have to do it in secret because I don't want anybody's eyes watching us get Carlo and Krista's permission We'll work at the Air Force Academy. We'll do a section. You go show it to your coaches if things go along well. Because I didn't know how well we were going to get along or if we were going to mesh and things were going to work. So she goes, deal. And I said, if it's not working out between us, let's not waste your time. Move on. So we started. 
And uh, we spent one afternoon, we put her whole first section of her long together. She showed it to Carla and Krista the next day. They loved it. We moved on to the slow piece. They, and it just all worked out. And nobody knew where she got this program from because we did it secretly. And then kind of word got out. And then she won Worlds that year. And that's the story. What can I say? It was the first program I ever choreographed. Well, I mean, you know, you want to choreograph, yeah, the world champion. That's kind of the way to start, honey. Yeah. Well, I want to hear from both of you now your predictions, the top three that you think is going to end up in Boston, and also your hashtag MK moment of the season in the dance event. Top three, and this is not in any particular order. I'm um, probably in the order that. Oh yeah. no! Oh, I. Can't. Do you want me to go first? Yeah, you go I'll... first, Dave. Oh, okay. It hurts me because I really love the French, but I think it's all going to come together for the Shibutani's in Boston. I just feel like it's sinner, <laughs> it's synergy, it's happening. I think the Shibutani's are going to win it. The French will be second, and I think the Canadians will be third. And I think there will be massive fan out cry and happiness and debate everything will happen is what I I, I actually think. would agree with that Me I, too, like yes. if I were gonna and I'm not just saying this because I support you or something I I'm on board with that I I am too now from both of you what is your hashtag MK moment of this season I love the French free dance this season but I think they're, they've been struggling in the short dance and I think it's gonna yeah. be their undoing at Worlds yeah could be could be could be um I'll just say hashtag go shibsibs. Oh, yes. Oh. I, I'm agreeing. I think their long or free dance in Boston, where is that? <laughs> their free dance at Nationals was fantastic. The fact that the judges put them first in first and then to follow that up at Four Continents was phenomenal to see. And like you said, Dave, I think that momentum is just in their favor and they're going to continue. Renee, thank you so much for coming oh, on the Skating Lesson. Lesson. So great to talk to you. I know. So when do you come to Boston? We would love to see you and have you on one of I our shows. I will be there. Yeah. I think I come in on Thursday. Okay. So oh. All right. we'll see you in a couple weeks. See you there. Okay, thank you very okay. much. And Dave, uh, lead us out. Okay. Yes, as always, we want to remind you to skate to the mermaid, hold an edge, and look sexy. Bye, Bye guys. guys.